Did you microwave fish? I know it's loud, but this guy right here, this little guy is causing all the problems. This is a Xilinx C1100 FPGA, and it's currently mining iron fish. And before we turn this off, let's take a look at the performance that it's getting so we get a sense of what's been happening at iron fish and why they're looking to fork to use a different algorithm. So switching over here, what you're looking at is Team Red Miner, which has a public bitstream to support the Xilinx C1100 FPGA mining on Ironfish, and it's doing very, very well. We're gonna let this refresh here in a second. There it is, you can see 49.46 gigahash per second for 72 watts, a little bit more on that in just a second. I don't even have this thing tuned that well. I just kind of put the Caspa clocks right onto this for Ironfish and just let it roll, and it's been mining for quite a while. Okay, that's much quieter. On what to mine, I have in the hash rate that that can do, and I have the power that it's using, which the external fan that's used to cool it adds probably about 20 watts to the overall power that it's pulling, which is still really good. And I have just an average electric rate in here. And the one thing I wanna call out is the fees. The fees to mine on this FPGA on Ironfish on Team Red Miner is 10%, which you might go, man, that is a ridiculous fee. But like, listen, they put in the work, made a public fish stream, and they're gonna get 10% to do that because nobody else has done it as widespread as they have, plus the pool fee, which is 0.9%. So we're gonna go calculate on that. What we're gonna take a look at is what this is profiting per day as of making this video, which is $1.15. Which, in times like this, crypto where it is right now, though it's coming back up, that's really, really good. It's really good, $1.15. And just to put that in perspective, so I made a video mining Iron Fish on all my 30 series cards a little while ago, this is nine months ago, and uh, the card we're gonna choose to compare this FPGA to is gonna be a 3090 Ti, which has a great efficiency and also a great overall giga hash that I can do. 18.69 for 121 watts. I got that into what to mine, and we're gonna compare. So put that in here, fees much lower, and I'm gonna hit calculate, and we're looking at, let's take a look, 21 cents per day profit compared to a dollar 15 cent per day profit so almost a dollar more on this fpga than a really good really high performing gpu so you can get a sense of the problem here as to why ironfish is going to introduce a new algorithm and fork to get rid of devices just like this fpga and i'm sure asics that will be in line right behind it mm -hmm. so that has led to Fish hash. What is fish hash? Fish hash is the new memory hard proof of work algorithm that the Ironfish network will be switching over to on April 2nd, 2024. So coming up soon. And I'm going to go into how I'm testing this in just a little bit in this video. But the thing I really wanted to do was take a look and learn more about fish hash and I guess the whole process of getting there. This is really interesting. It's kind of like deep dive stuff, but I find this fascinating. And if you're curious on how this whole development process has went, then stick around and watch this part of the video. Otherwise, you can fast forward and watch me mine fish hash to see what kind of performance it gets. But I love this stuff. Give me a lot of information. So uh, this proposal is changing the iron fish hashing algorithm to a memory hard proof of work algorithm similar to EdHash. So it's going to use the memory of the GPU, which is what the current algorithm absolutely does not do, which has made it so susceptible to FPGAs and ASICs. This algorithm levels the playing field between different mining hardware to make mining more accessible to a wider range of community members. So then we get to like, why did this happen? What was the motivation to go ahead and change and fork over to a different algorithm? During the first days of the Ironfish mainnet, it was observed that there was a high percentage of blocks of unknown origin. This unknown hash rate was unaffected by price changes compared to the hash rate from GPU mining. So GPU miners traditionally will chase profit, prices come down, they'll leave the network, go mine something else, prices come up, they'll come back to the network. But this hash rate from this unknown region just remained the same and never left, uh, which is definitely curious, definitely curious. And so that gave them the uh, notion that this probably had some advantage over GPU miners, thus could be FPGA farm, could be ASIC farm mining on Ironfish. So Ironfish opted to change the proof of work scheme using a project, a proposal made by Lollydeb, which is the developer of Law Miner, LOL Miner. And they did this back on September 18th and eventually named the algorithm FishHash. The goal of FishHash to be memory bandwidth bound as opposed to the current compute bound Blake 3 algorithm. 
Memory chip hardware is all very similar in performance and characteristics. For this reason, the memory used in different device categories such as GPUs, FPGAs, and ASICs are all very similar and have only minor differences in, this, in their performance. So the compute can be widely better more chips, all that kind of stuff in FPGA or ASIC versus memory is not going to be that much better, if better at all. The performance and efficiency difference between the specialized ASICs, FPGAs, and widely available hardware commodity GPUs is as small as possible. So what I want to take a look at now, we're going to jump down here a little bit. They did consider a bunch of current algorithms or proposed algorithms instead of creating the own, their own. And this kind of what led to them doing fish hash instead. So first they looked at edhash. Great algorithm. It was the proof of work mining algorithm uh, before E switched over to proof, proof of stake back in September 22. It's used by a bunch of other projects now and there's variations of it as well, which we get into here. And it was created with the goal of being memory hard, ASIC resistant algorithm and achieved that goal through much of the ETH's history. Though there eventually were ASICs that were created, their efficiency was somewhere between two and 10% efficient. They definitely got better over time, but in the early days of ASICs, they were not that much more efficient than a GPU. But the existence of those ASICs is the reason not to use EdHash as the mining algorithm. The next one, which this was learning for me, I didn't know about this. There was an EIP on Ethereum 3372, which was a change, a tweak to the EdHash algorithm to kick off ASICs all the way back then, though this was found similar to fish hash, and though it could be a viable alternative, was not chosen because they wanted to go with a custom mining algorithm for Ironfish. Ergo's algorithm was considered too, Autolikus version two. Uh, this was, I didn't know this, this is best based on the Equihash mining algorithm, which is what Zcash uses and a bunch of other cryptocurrencies back from like the 2017, 2018 time. It's also a memory hard hashing algorithm designed to be ASIC resistant, though if you watch, um, the actual full presentation from the law miner developer, he does showcase that it's not utilizing enough of the memory compared to like an ed hash, compared to a fish hash. So ASICs could be made and they could be more efficient. And so they didn't want to get tangled up if that happens with Ergo to be like kind of tangled up in that whole ASIC game. They also considered ProgPow, which is Kapow, FeroPow is all based off of this. And this was originally uh, proposed for Ethereum. They decided not to do it. But uh, of course, as always, I have my own opinions and feelings on this. The main reason the community members did not like this approach is because of the high temperatures and energy consumption on GPUs when using ProgPow. They also looked at EdHash B3, which is a variant of EdHash that uses Blake 3. Uh, internally instead of KetKak, and though they liked this one, decided ultimately not to use it because there is a risk that current existing EdHash ASICs could be tweaked to quickly move over and mine EdHash B3, kind of like getting them right back in the same category of being dominated by ASICs, dominated by FPGAs. So they looked at all of those and decided to use FishHash instead. And so a little bit more around fish hash and mining it with GPUs. First thing is it is a memory hard algorithm, so it does need a certain memory size, and that's gonna be 4,608 megabytes, and then there's gonna be an additional 72 megabytes used here uh, for some implementations. And so all that really means is that you're gonna need at least a GPU with five gigabytes of VRAM. So sorry to anybody who has some four gigabyte old AMD cards, you're not gonna be able to mine this. And though it also says any of the GPUs with six gigabytes, this is probably really what most of us, the oldest ones will have these days, would probably be those six gigabyte cards. We'll be able to mine this just fine, independent of what operating system that's running, and also independently of whether you have a display connected to that GPU or not. And then once the minimum memory capacity requirement is met, the performance on the algorithm depends on the memory bandwidth. With the access width of 128, the memory axes are identically wide as the EdHash algorithm, where over 90% of the theoretically available memory bandwidth can be used practically on all modern architectures. The memory bandwidth requirement is 50% higher than with EdHash. Thus, the maximum performance of the mining process is about two-thirds of the performance of mining EdHash on the same hardware 
given the same settings, and we will be testing that out here in just a bit. So what that means is if you have a GPU that had mined at hash in the past and you know exactly what hash rate that that card can get, what you would expect is around two thirds of that hash on the GPU using the same exact settings when mining fish hash versus at hash. And we're gonna put that to a test in just a second here. What I wanna take a look at as well is the Law Miner developer created these slides. They did a really excellent presentation. I'll have this all linked down in the description below where you can see a 3070 locked at 1410 plus a 2000 memory offset in Linux was giving these results on all the algorithms he tested as he kind of went through the approach of maybe figuring out, do I create a custom algorithm? Is it good for this project to use a current algorithm? This is that Autolicos, by the way, only utilizing 32% of the memory, which is why the risk of ASICs comes into play if it just makes sense for the ASIC manufacturers to make it uh, economically. So the proposal here is what wound up being fish hash, and you can see on that hash, doing almost 60 mega hash, which then the proposal, you're gonna be doing around 40 mega hash, utilizing the same amount of the memory, and then coming out a little lower on the wattage, and this is what 1410 locked. He also tested it locking the core on this 3070 all the way down into the 600s, which lost only a little bit of hash, but dropped some additional power. So this is very interesting to me. You can do some testing on this on Law Miner right now. With the current release that is out, you have the ability to mine fish hash. And I'll leave link this down in the description as well. And Hero Miners has a pool up right now for fish hash where you can mine on test net and mine directly to their pool to see how much hash rate your GPUs are gonna be getting. Before moving to that, let's go back to their original pool, which is the current Ironfish pool, and let's just take a look at how much income I've generated over time mining with some GPUs and mining with this FPGA for quite a while. So I've done 128 altogether Ironfish, which is equaling almost $250 USD right now, so can't complain about that. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the RTX 3070 that I have right here. This is an Asus Dual. One of the fans is practically falling off, just in my repair pile, had it widely available. I'm gonna get this up on the test bench here. We're gonna use the old Ethereum overclocks for this card and see what kind of hash rates and wattage and performance we get on the new fish hash. RTX 3070 is up on the test bench, mining fish hash as we speak. Let's take a look. What you're taking a look at is Law Miner's latest version, and we're getting the exact performance that I would expect considering that this GPU was doing 60 mega hash per second on the old Ethereum days, and with the same exact overclocks, we're talking core clock lock at 1110, and the memory clock around 2200, I'm getting the two thirds, which is 40 mega hash per second, on this GPU, which is really nice to see. So that kind of leads me to like, what is next? What am I gonna do getting ready for fish hash? I got a ton of GPUs I could put on it, but I've been through some hard forks before and I've had a kind of like a mixed experience. Let's rewind all the way back to the ones I went through in the early days, which is gonna be when Ravencoin forked their algorithm and when Flux forked their algorithm. Both of those, I was ready to go ahead my whole farm move over and I did really well because the difficulty adjusted way down and I was able to get a lot more Ravencoin and a lot more Flux than I was able to get before as I took advantage of that short time period until the difficulty adjusted again. For Fira, which was probably the most recent fork I was a part of, I had the opposite experience. I had everything ready. I'm talking like 100 GPUs ready and I moved them over to mine Fira and uh, I made way less Fira than I was making before because the difficulty took forever to adjust to the changing hash rate that was on the network. And so Ironfish is thinking about this. They do have a proposal introduced to go along with this fork and algorithm to take into account the hash rate change and how the difficulty is going to need to adjust so that essentially their blockchain just doesn't come to a crawl. And that's gonna be really important for the health of their network. So I love this stuff. I love tracking hard forks. I love being a part of hard forks. So likely I'm gonna have pretty good amount of GPUs ready to go just to participate and hopefully come away with a little more Ironfish than I was able to get before. 
There's a lot to cover, a lot to come up. I'll leave links to everything down in the description below. Let me know your thoughts on Iron Fish down in the description. Have you tested, in the comments, have you tested fish hash? Are you thinking about testing it? And hopefully just answer the question, do you like fish? fish. Don't worry, baby. You're gonna have a new home real soon.